Hello and welcome to today's video. I'd like to thank Solbio for actually supporting this channel. And uh, Solbio is a completely natural toilet fluid. It can be also used in the waste tank. It's environmentally friendly as it's made from completely natural ingredients. So if you'd like to know more about this product, there'll be more at the end of the current video and there will be links below. Thank you. This is Hamelberg in Franconia and a wonderful June day, 22nd of June and he spent the night here and this is for me what touring these old places in Germany is all about. This is the main square so presumably today is market day or maybe it's like this every day I don't know. Uh, when I came yesterday, what well, was in the afternoon, no one was here. That is the town hall. Now it looks old but it isn't because the previous town hall was destroyed in a fire in the 19th century. So that one is less than 200 years old, even though it looks a lot older. Apparently, they rebuilt it as it was. Now, any town, uh, you see, is only as old as the last fire. Now, but one thing that survived that fire was this wonderful fountain, which dates to the 16th century. And I understand it is one of the best preserved of its type in Franconia. So that is northern Bavaria. Now these things look nice, they shouldn't really drink the water out. I don't know, maybe you can. It doesn't say you can't, but then again, it doesn't say you can either. Now I saw on the internet Park for Night, which is a site uh, I am actually an advisor for, but uh, use all the time myself. And somebody complained about this church making a lot of noise at night every 15 minutes. I didn't notice it, but then again, I like things like that. That is the Catholic uh, town parish church. And it was built uh, by St. John as Baptist, 1389 to 1460. One and the choir also dates to the 14th century. At the far side of the Tsal River, overlooking the town, you can see up there we've got Saldet Castle, and the oldest parts date to the 12th century, and the keep uh, was used as a prison tower until 1749 and I bet the views are quite good from up there. Now, now this is a wine producing area. And the, uh, so that's now used, the, the castle stands for, for the wine restaurant. And uh, here in this street, we have the uh, uh, wine cellar. Uh, which dates, called the Wine Castle in fact, it dates to um, 1726 and 1731 it was built.
This is an island in the Tsar River. As you can see, the river on this side isn't particularly large and it's not much bigger on the other side either. But nonetheless, it is an island. So behind me, there's the water mill. And in 1830 in Hamelburg, there were as many as, uh, I think it was 37 water mills, something like that. Lots and lots of them creating power largely for, um, for, for milling wheat, I suppose. In 1945, there was the Allied victory and the Soviet zone of occupation was just to the north and northeast of here in Thuringia. So this is northern Bavaria. And as a result, there were lots of refugees. And on this rather small island was built something called the, the home for the uh, refugees from the east. So I think what they tried to do here was to set up something which reminded them of home. So it wasn't just those who ended up in the Soviet sector, of course, but uh, as a result of the 1939 Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, Poland was split in two, and it, as then the Soviet Union became an allied power due to Hitler's attack on it, then uh, the Soviet Union kept the land it had got thanks to its uh, attack on Poland alongside Hitler. Poles needed to be compensated. They got parts of what had been Eastern Germany. So uh, Pomerania, Silesia, East Prussia, or part of East Prussia. And those people from Germany ended up fleeing and they came to places like this, the Hamelberg. And on this island here was set up a home uh, well, set home for them, more of a sort of a community centre, I suppose, more than anything else. So this building is the Herrenmüller, the, the mill of the Lords of the Manor. It's today a museum. You'd never have guessed that. I hadn't told you them. This building dates to the uh, 17th century. Oh, it's been redone up. For, I know it was a bit of a ruin in 1980, but I saw photographs of what it looked like then. And uh, I've got a rather curious stone here as well. Don't know what that is. But, um, so this has been the biggest mill uh, that was here, the Lord of the Manor's place. And uh, now in the 14th, from about 14th century onwards, uh, so probably early as well, uh, flooding was a major problem. So the locals realized that one way to avoid, to, well, to profit from the flooding or to use it, the power of the rivers was to make mills. And so the first one went up around then. So we've got the entrance here, we've got a, Duckers are come in because it's only about I would say about one meter seventy two in height, and that now gives us a great view of the castle up there on the hillside. I'll bring it a bit closer. Around 1250, the Prince Abbots of Fulda 
fortified Hamelberg as a protection against attacks by building walls, trenches, and three towers with gates and 11 towers in the wall. Today, three towers still survive. And this is one of them. It's called the Bardertorn. That is the Evangelical Church, which dates to 1962. And that is much older. I think it's 13th century. At least originally from 13th century. And there's a stork's nest above it. some words of wisdom for all. Hate brings death. Love brings life. So the church we can see there, it's a hospital church, St. Nicholas, and it was originally built under Abbot Heinrich von Hochenberg, 1315 to 1353. In 1404, a chapel was added to it. But the fire of 1854, which I have already mentioned, having burnt things down, um, did some damage to it, so they improved the facade and uh, added the turret in, or the tower, I should say, in neo-Gothic style. Looks a bit like a turret, actually, you know, so I was right the first time. And uh, so the, there was a choir room added in 1972, because it doesn't really look that old, does it? And we'll have a look at the sign. There you go, 1343. But the rest of what I said seems to have been correct, <laughs> as you'd expect.
I was standing here filming the castle. Behind me, this is what I should have done, turned the camera around, but I added the lens around. I didn't think of that, I don't know why. An eagle was behind, sat down. And I failed to get it, so I turned round very slowly. But I think I frightened the bird, and the bird flew off. I've never been so close to an eagle. I'll show you where the eagle was. Right there. Anyway, see, there's, I don't know what's over there. There's something over there. <laughs> anyway, that was a great little experience. At this location, until 1936, there was a Jewish family which ran a iron mongers business. In 1936, the shop presumably was taken away from it, see from the sign up here, and the, the head of the family, Adolf Nussbaum, and his entire family became victims of the National Socialist system. So thanks for watching, I hope you found that interesting and if you did then you might want to subscribe. All the best from me in Bavaria. This is the first time ever that I have accepted any support for uh, promoting a product on YouTube. Now I've been on YouTube now for 15 years and I've been doing the van life stuff for a number of years as well. Um, the reason I haven't accepted support in the past is because I, I felt it had to be something which I really agreed with and a product I knew. So I had to feel 100% about recommending it to others. This is Solbio and this is a toilet additive. Now, what's the point of a toilet additive? Well, when you use the toilet, then it goes into a cassette and you have to dump the cassette somewhere. Now, uh, if you just urinate into it, then there should be no problem. But if you put any solids into it, then it makes it a bit more difficult. Now, one thing you can do is if you have constant diarrhea, then you may not need a toilet additive because you should be able to dump it without any problems. For those of you who don't suffer from this problem, then uh, one thing you might want to consider doing, in fact, one thing you're going to have to consider doing is using a toilet additive. And there's two types. There's the blue stuff, which is manufactured by a number of companies and it works pretty well. No problems there whatsoever with the way it works. Oh, there's the green stuff, which is ecologically based. Now, up until now, the green stuff didn't work as well as the blue stuff. But I think with Solbio, uh, we're now seeing a comparative uh, working uh, rate. It works, just, it works just as well. So it's 
uh, ecological. What it's got inside are natural soaps, it's got natural citric acid, it's got uh, essential oils and plant extracts and that breaks down whatever it is that you're throwing into the toilet or, or releasing into the toilet I should say and when you come to a dump station you can just tip up your cassette and it all flows in nicely. Now you may say well I have constant diarrhea and so therefore I don't need something like that. Well uh, that, that may be the, the case but one thing that this has got it's got a rather pleasant fragrance to it as well. Now, I personally like the, the, the fragrance of the blue stuff, but I know I'm in a small minority on that one. One thing I noticed uh, when I've been doing tests of really small vehicles, uh, such as you know five and a half metre ones above all, so as soon as you open the door, you have this um, uh, fragrance, let's say, of the blue stuff sort of, sort of hits you. Now, uh, with this one here, Solbio, it's got a more natural sort of smell. It's, it's a bit uh, like uh, eucalyptus. I'm trying to find a good way of actually describing it. And the best thing I could think of, it's got you know, these cough drops or these eucalyptus like sweets. And it's got this type of fragrance within the uh, within the toilet anyway and uh, if you're in a small van I bet it fills up the it could fill up the small van I haven't really noticed it so when I'm sitting here in this position for example but uh, maybe I'm not using enough of it to actually notice uh, um, next thing is is it safe to use well the thing with the blue stuff is there are um, good reasons to suggest that it may not be completely safe to use. I mean, it does break things down in a chemical manner. I mean, I'm not going to suggest it's um, dangerous or anything like that, but I don't think it is particularly good for the environment. Uh, if it comes into contact with uh, plants or things of this nature, I mean, there's even there's warnings that, I mean, if you get it in a fish tank or something like that, I don't know what you want to put in a fish tank, but uh, if you put it in a fish tank, then the fish will die. So um, this, as it comes from natural things, you assume that it's okay. Now the blue stuff as well, I've noticed, I always get it on my hands. And not only that, I mean obviously I sort of miss the toilet as well. But Sorry, I get it into the toilet bowl, I don't miss the toilet, I miss the sort of the hole where you open up for the toilet. And it sort of stains and it takes a few uh, flushes for it to actually go down. I don't know if that's bad or not, but... Um, it's uh, with this stuff. It's uh, it's almost translucent. Not quite, but almost. As is when you dump it out, which seems a bit odd the first time. You think, hang on, just a minute. I'm sure I didn't just urinate in there. Uh, but but that's the way. That's the way it is. Um, the, the manufacturers say it doesn't cause skin irritation. I have never experienced skin irritation from the blue stuff, but I have heard of people. Uh, uh, having this problem and um, let's have another look at it because here it comes in two uh, this one one's for marine use and the other's for motorhome use now it could be that mariners use the toilet or they eat something a bit more dodgy or I don't know but it's it's different this contains 40 um, doses and it's dosed via this thing down here, this little tap. Now, um, I know there are people who are suspect of these taps. Now, I previously worked in the packaging industry. And indeed, I used to give uh, talks being an expert. I don't think I was much of an expert, but, but, uh, but uh, I do know a little bit about it. This technology is perfectly safe I think to use it's not I mean it's often used in bag in the box applications and so you, know, you get wine or something the wines in a in a um, in a box and it got this tap that sticks out and you and you use it in the company I used to work where we produced blueberry juice we use this technology and I've never known the taps to go wrong in my direct experience 
but when they first came out, I agree there was problems with them. I've heard of people saying they put something in the fridge or they, they, uh, you know, in, the, in the van and something hit here. In theory, you're supposed to knock both ends down at the... Oh, sorry, sorry, pull them both up and press down at the same time to get it to, to work. So, I mean, I do accept that these things can go wrong. Just as, I mean, if you don't close a bottle properly, everything will uh, go out. But I, ma I make that part. Other than that, the bag may seem a little uh, unsturdy because of the, the, the way it is. But uh, I can tell it's made from um, recycled. Uh, it's green plastic. It's uh, and uh, I think it's I think it's quite safe. So uh, there's some observations on this. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, I really do think it's a, it's it is a good solution for you. Now, it costs roughly the same as the blue stuff. There isn't much difference. Now, I do appreciate that um, in, um, with, if there was a price difference, that might be a problem. Although, I think if you're into motorhomes, then you probably like living in harmony with nature, which is what I'm in it for really I think I think it's the call of nature this contact with nature and all the rest of it so I think that protecting nature is something that uh, I, I would want to do whether or not I'm prepared to pay a premium yes maybe I'm prepared to pay a little bit of a premium for it but in all honesty this between this one and the blue stuff there's hardly any difference right so uh, if you find that of interest there will be a link below it's not an affiliate link it just tell you where to get the stuff from um, I'm not on any affiliate programs at all deliberately so nobody can accuse me of uh, uh, trying to promote something to get the affiliate uh, link but I do absolutely believe in this product so thanks very much for watching. I am currently at a place called Alexa Camping or Camping Alexa in northern Poland. And you may have heard some of the noises on the outside from the campsite. But I shall tell you more about that in another video. So there you go. This is about Solvio. Thanks for watching.